So we're going to do another interview now. We're going to meet Jeannie, who lives in this beautiful Lazy Days uh, motorhome. Uh, so Jeannie, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come to be a nomad? Um, I've been on the road since August of 2012, and I was uh, in Austin, Texas. I uh, worked for 13 years for Dell Computer and got into a job that was kind of um, a little stressful and um, I had a house that I was looking to sell and uh, the market was terrible and then the market suddenly turned in Austin in, in uh, the spring of 2012 and I was able to sell the house and at the same time I had this job that was making me crazy and I ended up uh, putting it up for sale and uh, thinking about living in my RV. I had a, uh, I bought a Lazy Days and um, uh, a few months earlier and uh, decided to live in it. Uh, quit the job, sold the house, took off on the road for a few months to figure out where, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to work, where I wanted to live. And um, and that was four years ago. <laughs> wow. So, um, but it took me a, a few years of um, research. Um, I was looking at... Um, Before RV. four years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, looking at selling a house and um, I was looking at downsizing. It was um, too big of a house. I was looking at downsizing. I found some tiny houses, people living in RVs. I found cheaprvliving.com. I decided on lazy days and I found one that was um, just the next town up. A guy was reading his blog and so when I saw his ad on Craigslist, I felt like I knew the rig and I bought it and was able to get on the road with it. So, um, Why RV? And, what, what made you want to do, in, you know, um, Most ladies, when they retire, they just sit yeah. comfortably at home. But you want to yeah. get out there and see the world. Yeah, I um, my folks, when they retired, um, they took off in a fifth wheel for a couple of years, so I was familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then they came back to Texas and built a house, and I, it was kind of in the back of my mind. And I saw how they were retired, and I started um, you know, trying to save a little bit and thinking maybe I'd retire later. And then it ended up coming earlier than I expected. But... Um, uh, so I, I thought I'd buy the, this RV that I uh, found online. I thought I'd get that, have it for a couple of years, and then retire, and then get a bigger one because um, this one was it was 22 feet. It was 20 years old, but it was in good shape, and um, so I was able to. I thought it'd be my practice rig, and then I ended up living in it for a year. Um, but uh, so you know, when I was researching and finding these other blogs, and I found people doing this like living and traveling, and it just seems so fantastic and. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a gypsy. I, I think I've, I have that. I used to move a lot, and um, I'm easily, I'm easily bored and easily amused. So that really kind of plays well with this kind of lifestyle. So. so if you start to get bored, yeah, you drive somewhere new yeah. and you're amused again. Yeah, and when I first started out, I I moved a lot, and now I like to sit for two weeks, and I just kind of like live my life, but I do it in beautiful places. And so that's just, that's my, that's my camping style now mm -hmm. is that, and I've met so many uh, people on the road that I have way more friends on the road than I did when I was in, in a job in a house. Um, and there's always somebody somewhere uh, to camp with, or there's somebody uh, that's somewhere that I want to go camp with. And I have folks all the time saying, oh, we're over here, come, come camp with us. And um, you know, I've been to the RTR, uh, the Rubber Champ Rendezvous, um, I've camped with Randy and, you know, and then once you you meet people on the road, then there, there's all kinds of places to go and people to see and people to camp with. So and and there's so many things to see in general. You'll never run out. No, no. You'll never see them all. Yeah, my bucket list is really long. And everywhere you go, you meet some, a new friend. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. new connections. Yeah, even with the little group we have here, there's there's two new people that I've never camped with before. Right. So, yeah, it's great. And who knows how many times you'll be camping with them down yeah. the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you kind of, people wonder if they're going to go out and be lonely. You haven't found that at all. No, no. Although I was a loner, I was more of a, an introvert to begin with. Um, and so I do like my alone time. But then, you know, you kind of surround yourself with your own tribe and folks that, that kind of like to be alone and like to have, you know, a social component. So you're able to join in with a social component as much as you want and also have your own rig that you can be by yourself as much as you want mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been out in the forest by myself for 10 days at a time and that was fine and and I like to have um, someone to kind of camp with and travel with um, you know there's safety in numbers although I think I'm much more safe out on the road than I was in the house in the city so, so you haven't have you been fearful or afraid since you've been on the road no there was one um, maybe twice there was one time I can remember that I pulled into a, um, a campground 
drove all the way up Casper Mountain in Wyoming and it was a really tough drive and I got there and I didn't like the feeling of the campground and I there, there just was something about it that was kind of creepy and um, I just thought I'm not going to stay there and so I just you just got to trust your gut right. and most of the time everything is great but that one time I ended up driving back down the mountain and went to the Walmart for the night and you know it may have been fine but I you know guys sitting in cars in a campground with no content I, I it just it, sometimes you just trust your gut and that was like the one time if there was another time um I can't remember but rarely rarely were you afraid beforehand for your safety? Did it occur to you, boy, I don't know if I'm going to be safe out there? No, I don't think it really occurred to me. You know, you, you were just confident the whole time. Yeah, I mean, you just, um, you know, you have, you know, common sense. Right, just common sense. And, you know, you kind of, like, watch out, and you do your research, and, um, I'm, you know, I'm pretty common sense, so you kind of, like, can take care of yourself. Right. Right. Keep, keep, you know, just keep aware of your surroundings. Right. And follow and your And do gut. good research. Right. Yeah, all you got, yep. And so uh, after four years, do you have any regrets? You wish you hadn't done it, things you've done right, things you've done wrong? Gosh, I can't say that I do anything differently. Um, I, I, I'm I glad at the, the the RVs that I bought. I bought one that I was able to get into for a little over $10,000, and it got me on the road, and it was a good one to live in for a while, and um, I had really downsized my house. I put all my stuff into storage for six months, in a storage thinking that if it didn't work for me I could set up a house and right. then uh, I loved it so much when I was out on the road for about three or four months I went back to Texas and um, donated it all got rid of it and um, and then ended up traveling for another year and then um, sold the 22 foot and bought this 26 foot for a time I had a scooter I needed uh, kind of some something to get into town and back and so Maybe you didn't I have to break the, camp every time. Yeah, yeah. With the 22 foot, it was kind of easy, and I was traveling a lot. But once I started kind of like sitting in one place for about two weeks, it, it was easier to... I was always bumming rides, and I didn't like that. So I uh, wanted my own transportation, and, and I got a scooter. I got a ramp on the back and did the scooter because I thought towing a car just really scared me. The scooter ended up being harder than I thought. About a year, year and a half ago, I, I ended up getting a car. I got rid of the scooter and got a car. Um, and the, towing a car is easier than I thought it was going to be. So um, I ended up getting a manual transmission and just like pop it in neutral and go. So, you know, the, the, the getting the stuff to do it, uh, all the, the, the tow bar and uh, base plate and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of expensive to get set up, but it's so nice having a car. So maybe if I had to do something different, maybe I wouldn't get the scooter because mm -hmm. it just, I should have just gotten a car to begin with. Right. But, uh, people are afraid of towing. Yeah. But it, it you found it really wasn't any big yeah, deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I would, I'd mess it up. You know, I just figure I would be one of those people that's, you know, dragging a car with the brake on or something. And if you just follow it with any, with the rig, you follow a checklist before you get going with the car. You just have the things that you do. And I went to, there's a, a Lazy Days, uh, they have a gathering of the ladies, uh, la ladies uh, mm -hmm. gathering every September. And one of the seminars uh, that year, not last year, the year before, was about to tow or not to tow. And just talking to the ladies about it and then explaining, you know, how, how it is to, you know, to be turning and, and negotiating um, roads and stuff with a car. The car is actually skinnier than, a, than an RV. So, you so can't if I can, yeah, so I'm like, oh, well, you know, I gotta watch my back tires and my tires swing. So if your back tire can make it, the car can make it because it's skinnier than you. So I'm like, bing. So it was like, that was like a light bulb moment of, if I could drive this, the car is just going to follow behind me. And as long as, um, you know, you just hook it up properly, put it in neutral and just, you know, kind of double check it and, and go. And yeah. I can kind of tell if I'm going up a mountain that I have some extra weight back there, but it's really light A Ford Fiesta. It's 2,500 pounds. So it doesn't do much. It's, it's great to be able to, um, go into town, take my laundry, do grocery shopping, go hiking, you know, just take it anywhere we want to go. Mm -hmm. So, so you can build, set up camp. And go explore yeah. very cheaply. Right, exactly, yeah. Instead of eight or ten, or if lucky, on your lazy days, you can yeah. probably get 30... Yeah, 40 gallons. 30, 40 miles. That's yeah, 40 yeah. miles a gallon. That's super. Yeah, and people always ask what kind of mileage you get on this, which is about nine, but I always say, but it's a house. It gets good mileage for a house. Right. Very so, good mileage for a house. Very good mileage for a house. Right. So, yeah. But between the two combined... Between the two, yeah. It's, yeah. it's doing pretty well for the year. And I like to kind of settle. 
I always say I spread out like flubber. You know, I just have, I get to camp and I'm just like spread out. I don't want to break that every time I want to go someplace. Right. So that's my style. And then also if I'm camped with, with my gal pals, we just pile in the car and go. Mm -hmm. So it's nice having someone with a car. Right. Yes, it is. Very much. Yeah. So you're boondocking here in yep. uh, Cotton, near Cottonwood, Arizona on mm -hmm. National Forest land. Do yeah. you mostly boondock or mostly. RV parks? Yeah, I started off in RV parks, uh, national parks, state parks. Um, and it was okay. And I've done some RV parks. Um, I did a month in Denver in an RV park. It was so close together, but I was glad to have it because I was selling my rig and buying this one and I had stuff to do and get the scooter. So I've done RV parks, but I'm not crazy about them. And I'd rather be able to spread out and have the forest. And I'm just a forest and a mountains kind of a gal. I don't really want to be, I'm just not a, a, an RV park kind of person. It's right. just, I prefer to be out here. Um, I don't have a problem leveling. I like the, you know, my tribe is out here. These are the folks that I like to camp with, and we just like to be out in nature right. all the time. You just walk off. I like, you know, campsites where there's uh, forest roads going off in all directions. Um, soon we're going to be up uh, closer to Flagstaff. You get in the forest, and there's, you know, great trails every which yeah, way to just take the dog and just go off a new trail in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that, I just, that's, that's where my joy is. And have you had any problem finding free boondocking spots? No, um, there's, you know, different websites. Um, I have the Benchmark Atlas, and so, like, when I read your blog and you write about a place uh, that you're camped and it looks good, I will get out my Benchmark and I'll mark it, and I'll write, you know, Cheap RV Living and the date. Or RV Sue has a lot of good a lot of those. spots. Um, a lot of the blogs, I will mark them on my Benchmark. I'll go to freecampsites.net, and there's the motor vehicle use map. You go to the Forest Service, they have to give you a motor vehicle use map that shows dispersed camping. Mm -hmm. Campendium is great now. I love Campendium. That's a new one. And they've got some good stuff with a lot of pictures. Um, so you can get an idea of a place. Um, but yeah, so you, I just make notes um, uh, on my benchmarks. Uh, I keep a, a spreadsheet of the places I've been with the GPS so I know where to go back. I keep a spreadsheet with, you know, where to dump. And also RV Sue, she'll write like where she got her propane, where she dumped her tanks and that kind of stuff. So I mean, once I've got all that information and I kind of plan next year's travels, I kind of, I kind of map it out on a spreadsheet to know where to go. So you follow these other blogs and you know yeah. where they've been, mm -hmm. you can get this and that and this yeah, yeah. all around the country. Yeah, so maybe I'm not going to go there this year or next year, but right. in three years, maybe I'll, I'll go back and I'll have it all in my benchmark of, of where to go. Right, it's very likely to, yeah. to crisscross where the other bloggers have been. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so you this is your second lazy days now and right. so you must think they're pretty special. I like them. Yeah. I've uh, I like the look of them. I like the retro look. I like the quality. Um, I like you know, when I was researching there's there's really kind of a community that mm -hmm. you get with them and and that appealed to me when I was first researching is you know they have gatherings. Um, they have uh, a gathering in Quartzsite which when I was first on the road I was invited to and I thought, "Yeah, well, that sounds good." So um, when I went there, I met a whole lot of Lazy Days folks, and now those are some of my good good friends that I camp with. Um, and you know, there's a ladies gathering every year. There's there's a community that you can go to different gatherings, and there's a, a forum online that is very very informational. It's a very well run one about um, different things, engine wise, coach wise, batteries, solar, whatever you need help with. There's probably someone who's had that problem before, and you can go research. So it's um, it's a good rig. It's the I like the layout. I like the amenities, um, and it's what I ended up settling on when I decided I wanted to RV is to get a Lazy Days. And the first one I got was um, a '92, but it was in great shape, and was great at first. And then when I realized I was going to be doing this for the foreseeable future, I ended up getting a 26 foot mid bath, which gave me a bit more space, and it's more of it's more kind of house like. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, Lazy Days has a reputation as one of the very best RVs yeah. you could buy. Yeah. And so would you agree with that? I would, yeah. And then, then they're not cheap. They're, um, you get the quality. You pay for the quality. You get your money's worth. You do. It, they're just, they're hard to come by sometimes, especially right. outside of California. They're just, uh, they're custom made, not custom made, but they're, they're made to order in California, near L.A. So, you know, in Texas, it was just really hard to find one. I was lucky to find one. They're only kind of on the on the secondary market you you buy them from individuals they don't you don't go into dealers very much there, there aren't any dealers and so um, you have to be really uh, kind of almost lucky to find a good one um, unless you're oh, they're, they're in California a lot but 
Um, so I, I was just really uh, lucky and uh, had some good perseverance to get my first one. And then I ended up um, being near Denver when this one came up and it ended up being being good because this one um, had a, a they had reinforced uh, for towing back there and it ended up being really good for putting a scooter on. So, you know, to finding the right rig, you just have to be perseverance and luck. Yeah, it really is. For, for any rig, really. Really. You know, but, you know, I just found that uh, that's the combination that I needed to get the rigs that were perfect for me. Um, patience. Right. Um, but, yeah, so I like the quality. I like the design. I like the layout. I, I think it's, it's worth what you pay for. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, why don't we go take a look inside? Yeah, my first one was blue and white, and I kind of like that color. The gray and white, um, it's, uh, the, the gray is not great paint for, it, it fades a bit, but um, they have that kind of retro look yeah. that I really like. And uh, so, and your Ford Festiva, F Fiesta? Uh, Fiesta. Fiesta. Yeah. And you just tow it so, in yeah, back. Yeah, it's so light, uh, it gets great mileage, um, can haul stuff and people and... Works great. And even with a great big rig, you camp as much out of it as you do in it. Yeah. So, so you're outside a lot. Yeah, so I've got, you know, chairs. I've got a bed for Riley out here. So there's Riley. There's Riley. Let's open that up. And one thing these uh, Lazy Days are known for is their real quality build and and in every way they're very high quality yeah a lot of wood real wood um and, and so you s actually sleep up on the uh yeah on the overhead yeah i sleep above i make a bed i don't sleep in a sleep sack although i, I have one up there um but i make the bed with a fitted and flat sheet like a real person and i like that that's my thing is i want to get into a, a real bed at night not a sleeping bag so, um, but yeah, the thing about the Lazy Days is they did have a, um, uh, a full oven, not a, you know, a RV size oven, stove, and a microwave. Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't want a convection oven or just a microwave. I wanted a real oven because I bake. So you do actually use the oven? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. a lot, a lot, yes. Yeah. So that was important to me. And that's one thing I liked about the Lazy Days was you did have the full, um, the full kitchen amenities. This one has a, a fold up, um, deal for extra counter space. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot. You know, this one has a dinette and this pulls out and then you can actually uh, has have extra cushions. So this pulls out and you can make a bed here, which I've never done. Right. But, Unless you um, have a gazette guest or yeah. Um, most people don't. And then I you know in the cab I, I close that off with insulated curtains so I don't see my <coughs> excuse me storage back there. And I've got a uh, I've got a 12 volt outlet up here and I've got stuff that I plug in right there and I've got a inverter right up behind the refrigerator and that's where I plug in to the battery to run 110. And how much solar are you running? I have 320 watts. I have two 160s and then I have a, um, a Blue Sky controller, controller, charge controller and monitor and my batteries are right there so we have the run just kind of going right in here. My inverter's right there. We're run, I uh, got about a two foot run from the batteries on, on two out welding cables so there's like no no drop off in in charge. Lots of good storage. Nice. Oh all, yeah, lots all of nice real cabinets. Underneath the, underneath the um, dinette seats and up above and drawers and everything. Uh, and you have a microwave. Do you run a generator? Yeah. To I have a generator. I don't run it that much. I just don't choose to use the microwave that much. I tend to run my generator once a month to exercise it rather than actually using it. I okay. need to use it more, <laughs> but. A lot um, of people end up doing that, yeah. yeah. With the so, solar, especially. Once in a great while, I'll run the microwave, but it's, it's storage right now. I keep it's, my chips in there. I think most uh, microwaves <laughs> end up being just, uh, yeah. you know, let's put the chips in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, back here, we actually, the bathroom door closes. So oh. if it's really cold at night, I will close that off and maybe run my little heater in here. And, um, and also, if somebody's showering, um, that closes. And then I also have a. Um, an accordion door that closes off here. Mm -hmm. And so if someone's showering and then the wardrobe is here, um, that makes a nice little area um, for, for couples or if you have a guest. Chances are it's mostly couples. Yeah. And so, yeah, this yeah. is a real convenient thing. Yeah, and I have a, um, a catalytic heater that I um, had put in a, about a year and a half ago that comes off of my hot water heater gas line. 
And so I can move that up front or I can keep it back here. And so do you just use it or do you use the furnace as well? I rarely use the furnace. That's all it's you so found. inefficient and loud. Yeah. So um, your batteries. Yeah. And so this I just um, you know, I keep my propane tank filled and um, this thing is on a I think it's a seven foot. I got a, some extra tubing on it and so that can go up there and back here and I made a little cover for it because you're supposed to keep them covered. So yeah, the dust kills yeah. the, uh, the Yep. So I made that out of leather. And um, so I have, and this is the mid bath, and so it's got two couches, and I actually have, I do fiber arts kind of thing. So I have a spinning wheel, I've got a loom, I've got, I knit, I've got projects and yarn everywhere. So. Um, and that's actually a uh, spinning wheel. That's a spinning wheel. And you spin. Yeah. yeah, I just, you just treadle it. Right now I've got something on there, but you just treadle it. And just, I've got fiber and it just spins. And you make cloth. I make, That's what you're doing. I make yarn, so I, ma I would make yarn like that. Mm -hmm. It makes yarn, so yeah. And then, and then, you then from that, the I will knit and make. Um, I'm working on a shawl right now. Um, I've made socks. I make a lot of socks right now. So, um, oh, he doesn't like that sound. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's my thing. Is I knit a lot and I spin and I weave. Do you sell it? I mean. Hand spun, um, hand sewn. You know, sewn. I, I have an Etsy shop that I don't have going right now. I tend to give away stuff. Um, find, like, here's a scarf. Here's, and I do book binding and I make lotions and stuff. And I just try to uh, find people that need those things and just give them away. Because I, I can't deal with putting it on a website or whatever. I just would rather say, here, anybody want this? So, um, and but usually, this, but you don't get your money back per hour that you know but I'm not can. looking for it yeah I'm not yeah. I'm not looking to monetize it I just right. enjoy it right and so I enjoy the making and uh, sometimes I just have to offload stuff to get it out of the rig <laughs> and find people to take them please please take my stuff please you want a <laughs> scarf anybody need a hat <laughs> have a book um, so um, yeah so you know knitting is a very portable activity um, spinning wheel not so I just started doing this and and um, Weaving, you know, it's hard to do some of these things in a small space, but it's possible. Um, yeah, it and like um, you. you know, having and I've got yarn up in these cabinets too. Um, so that's that's a bit of my obsession, but um, I enjoy it. It's it's my joy, um, and so I this one, these floor plans, they or these RVs, most of the lazy days, they had a uh, a TV up in this cabinet, and. Um, I didn't like sitting here and craning my neck, so mm -hmm. my dad and I took the TV out. Um, there's a stud right here, and so we, we attached, and the TVs these days are so light. So we um, put a mount there. If I had to do it over again, I would get a smaller TV. And the house, bigger is better, not so much in an RV. But, and so we cut some shelves and put my DVDs and stuff up there. I've got an inverter. Uh, that runs off a of 12 volt. So if I am boondocking, I can run my DVD and TV off of my 12 volt. And um, and then I also put in a pantry right here. My dad built that for me. Nice. He's got a wood shop. Peek that and peek in there. Yeah, it's um. <clears throat> this is uh, Andy Baird at um, oh, right. Andy Baird's Travels. He did the he has the plans, and so we uh, made this and. So it's like three inches, which boy holds a yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah, it's a four inch, uh, it's a one by four, which is really three and a half. And so that's mostly what you need. You know, it's just everything is flat. Kind of, yeah, less than four inches. So, yeah, that's amazing amount of yeah. stuff and easily and it was found. Just, yeah, you know, there was this was just a wall that had a clock on it. Right. And you know, Andy Andy took out his his um, door, but I use this a lot, so I didn't want to lose that. So we set it up so that it and you, it, it's a little bit more forward than his, but you don't lose any hall space. I mean, you can go by this. No, oh no, just problem. fine. There's no problem there. Yeah, no one would be too big to yeah. go through here. Yeah. So. So and I'm gonna stick my head in your bathroom. Yeah. So there's um, this is one thing that was a lot bigger, and this one than my prior one is I have a, a good size shower, which is where I store my. Um, laundry and stuff and and it's a, a wet bath so uh, yeah. just your shower gets wet yeah yep. and you know I've got um, extra storage above and I've got storage below and you know it's a good size 
One thing uh, Lazy does is make make things right, quality yeah. and well designed. I mean, this oh is yeah, the design is really good, and they don't change from year to year. I mean, this is a two thousand one, and you look at a new one, and there's a few changes, but not much. It's almost all the same. Plenty big room bathroom. Yeah, you're you're comfortable in there. Yeah, and plus, if you close that door and close off this um, uh, accordion door, you've got a nice dressing area. Mm -hmm. So. And then Riley has his bed, and, mm -hmm. and these couch, these are twin size, um, and they can pull out, and this couch cushion goes down, that could be a double, or you can put them together for a king. Um, and the one I had before was a twin king, so the back was the same, except for the dinette was in between. And then you had a smaller bathroom. And a huge amount of light in here. Oh, yeah. Really pleasant view to sit in here and just look out. You can see oh, yeah. uh, 270 degrees. Yeah, and that's the thing is that what I liked about this floor plan is that you can just, I just, I like to go to pretty places and live my life in a pretty place. Right. I love the mountains. I love the forest. I love, you know, the, the green desert. This is beautiful. You know, in the, in the winter, I'm in quartzite. And um, so, yeah, it's just, I got a great view. I can sit in here and knit or read or go out. I go outside and sit with the group and I take my knitting and we sit around and chitter chat and I'm knitting <laughs> and they don't mind so well you've got a great great life here I think I do I really like it well Jeannie thank you so much for uh, showing us your home and uh, sharing it with us it's really wonderful you've got a really great life here I love it yeah, yeah. I uh, it started off as a, as a short term. I'll just figure out what I want to do with my life, and now it is my life. It is your so, life. Yeah. And a wonderful life it is. It is. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it for a while. I know that. Okay, well, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. And we'll see you down the road. Okay, thanks. Bye.